see we're going next is a neo-modernist direction where we have a generation of students who have watched reality TV and it's not enough to just study reality or contemporary issues. They want to impact it, they want to affect it. We're using the, the laptops, they're able to collaborate uh, inside and outside the classroom with this project specifically. They had to do a recording piece of it, and so they were able to take the laptops and go up to the garden and go to different parts of the campus with their group and get a quiet place for recording purposes. So they've really been able to do much more with these laptops than, than they would have been if they were just in a regular computer lab. So my whole thing is like you always hear on the news like the polar ice caps are melting, people are dying, there's disease, pollution, we're all doomed. And my kind of thing was I wanted to have some sort of say in it because if those things were going to happen, I at least want to know I didn't stand back and do nothing. So that was part of me joining the Green Academy because it's not like you have to do this huge life change. Little things like recycling. I mean, few, I mean, it's way more common to recycle now, but before, I mean, barely anybody's recycled. Right now, we're only juniors in high school and we're already learning how to use this type of equipment. And once we become like, uh, like, students at college or we already know how to use them and like we can take advantage of that. Technology has allowed us to um, engage the students in a way that meets them at, at where they are. Um, the students come to us uh, having a depth and breadth of utilizing uh, technology far beyond any of the adults in the room. And we knew two things. We knew one that we needed to engage students uh, and teach them to be successful in the 21st century, it needed to have technology attached to it. The way I see it is that technology really just amplifies who you are. So if you take a social human being and give them technology, they're going to use technology in that context and they're going to become more social. You take a more musical, creative, introspective human being, give them technology, they're going to create records. They're going to create films. So it's really our responsibility as educators to shape the opportunities and to frame the context in a healthy way. You know, I, I hear from students, it, it, it's funny, the adults talk about it more. The students expect it. They expect us to have the latest technology. And when we don't, they're like, hey, have you heard about this software? You know, when you're doing that PowerPoint, you know you can set it to do this, this, and this. Did you know that? <laughs> you know, it's, it's constantly like that. So they're teaching us. And that's a, that's a different playing field. I, I like it personally, but not everyone's comfortable with it. It's great teaching and the right technology. The right technology. Right. So it depends what you're trying to accomplish, what you use to weave together. Sometimes the right technology is a high-end workstation. Sometimes the right technology is a cell phone. Sometimes the right technology is an abacus. You know, it, it just depends what you're trying to accomplish. And we're trying to sample his guitar. It's, it's a famous song, uh, Lots of Love by Led Zeppelin. Oh, wow. A whole lot of love by Led there Zeppelin. And that's what we're sampling. And we're going to try to just morph it into our own song. Okay. Just, uh, we can add effects like gate or equalizer, and there are a lot of different uh, modes that you can use just to change the pitch, the modulation, frequency. Yeah, we're using a Pro Tools right now, which is a very advanced software. I, uh, it's direct, highly recommended. I love it. The kids these days are pretty amazing. You know, you, you put something in front of them, and through playing with it, you know, they, they can't break it. You know, they sit there and play with, try all the options, and they'll learn just as fast as having an authority figure standing up in front, giving them instruction. You know, so that's a lot of the classes based that way, where I just point them in the right direction, and I give them a challenge, and say, "Go figure it out." And there are a few kids who struggle, and I go help them, point them in the right, you know, give them a little more further instruction. But most of them just take off on their own and they accomplish the task. Uh, like Andrew and Ethan, I became very aware of the functions of teamwork, such as relying on others to complete their duties, so we're able to complete ours as well and actually generate a functioning robot. We've um, embraced the eight conditions um, uh, of student success, and we 
have things such as belonging, heroes, sense of accomplishment, fun and excitement, curiosity and creativity, spirit of adventure, leadership and responsibility, and confidence to take action. And so in all of those uh, initiatives that we have, we try to hit those. And curiosity and critical thinking are enormous. It really brings a lot of confidence to them when they can accomplish something that they didn't think they could do. Teach them some basic program, but then when they find out that they can write, it, it would never occur to them that they could write a computer program. And then I show them how simple it is and how just a few lines of codes can create some motion. And it uh, really opens their eyes and it gets them enthused about doing more. One way we've used technology here is with our smart boards where students now have to get up out of their seat and go and do something. Uh, whereas before they might sit there and not raise their hand if they had to speak orally, whereas they can go up, be visual, do something on the board, write the problem on the board, and now it's come alive for them and they've participated. It, well, it's called Catalyst for a reason. It's, it's designed to be a little bit of an, that little ingredient that allows a reaction to take off. And if we can plant that catalyst in a group of innovative educators and they can demonstrate what the way forward will look like. Then the long-term vision, the long-term scale is to bring other partners on board, to bring other funders on board, and help the best ideas grow. You know, not only are these kids learning practical skills, but they're learning something that is difficult to teach, and that is how to work together, how to be collaborative. So even if these kids don't go on to be, you know, video uh, you know, filmmakers or, uh, or music producers, they're learning how to collaborate and work with people, which um, I think is, is a real-life skill that's going to pay off dividends.